hot enough for you? If I hear hot enough for you, or, you know, it's not the heat, it's the humidity one more time this summer, I'm going to do myself in. I'm interrupting today's planned video on how to properly structure a talk to instead discuss creativity. And it is because of the weather that I bring this up. The entire country right now is suffering from what they're calling the heat dome of 2016. Now, the problem is, for instance, in Connecticut, we've had seven days of 90 plus degree heat and high humidity. But with this heat dome of 2016, the entire country is suffering record high heat. So we lose the ability, we lose the one thing that we've always had when suffering through a heat wave. The ability to reach out to someone else in the country who's not having a heat wave and complain about the weather. I tried this yesterday. I talked to a friend in Arizona. I got no love back. And 1,270 uh, in Ahwatukee. Now, I, I'm not authorized to <laughs> evacuate Ahwatukee, but this temperature Creek. seems pretty high. Cave uh, Creek is really Yeah, Cave Creek, Fountain Hills, uh, they don't look good either. <laughs> and frankly, Wickenburg is a total loss. All right, 2,960 degrees is hotter than anything we've got in Connecticut. So the real problem with the weather the real problem with the heat is the local television stations, not just here in Connecticut, but all over the country. Because if they haven't done a story like this yet, they will tomorrow or the next day. You can guarantee it. Now, all new tonight, we're trying to get creative as we enter our sixth day of the heat wave. The temperatures certainly have been scorching, but is it really hot enough to cook something? Basically, it all starts this way. They have a morning meeting and they decide at the assignment desk who's going to go where and cover what story. On a real hot day, what they do is they pull out a bunch of straws and every reporter pulls a straw out. And the reporter that gets the short straw gets to go out to the parking lot that day, put some food in the car and see if it'll cook. We brought these four items back to the station, placed them on baking sheets and set them on the dashboard at 1230. The problem is, we've seen this bit a hundred times, 200 times. I'm 61 years old, and this bit predates me. It predates broadcast television. They used to try to cook an egg on the sidewalk in the newsreels in the 1930s. So it's been done. I'm sure you took a class somewhere and they said, this is a great bit. People will love it. We don't love it anymore. We hate it. So here's a couple ideas. In, in, instead of sending the poor reporter out, and by the way, before I go on, I, I will give credit to the Channel 3 reporter who at least tried to make a point. This experiment just goes to show just how dangerously hot it can get in a car in just minutes. You can take a look here, over 100 degrees. A good reminder, never leave your child or pet alone in these conditions. That was a great point, and that would have been a good place to stop, but no. He was then forced to pull out bacon, which kind of diminished the whole point he was trying to make. So in instead of cooking food in the car to show us how hot it is, and by the way, we know what hot means. You just walk outside and you go, <laughs> shit, it's hot. So you don't have to tell us how hot it is. You know, tell us stories about the poor people have to work in 95 degree weather. That's interesting. That's news. Tell us how animals survive in such terrible heat. Tell us that we should make sure that there are cooling stations for the elderly and, and, and little children. But, but don't cook food. Next time you get an assignment to go cook food out in the car, I've got two suggestions for you that might help. One, I think the best suggestion would be to take the news director and strap them to the hood of the car and see how long it takes them to bake in the afternoon sun. Barring that, instead of going to the grocery store and buying some nachos and some cheese and an egg and sticking it in the car, why don't you buy 10 dozen hot dogs and go to a local park where kids are playing, 
you know, sitting under the, under the shade, trying to stay cool where they're swimming in the local pool. Take those 10 dozen hot dogs and stick them in the car. Cook the hot dogs in the car, then call the kids over and feed them the hot dogs. They'll appreciate it and you'll get a much better story out of it. So please, instead of cooking food in a car to show how hot it is, come up with something clever next time. And while we're on the subject, the first time we have a snowstorm, please, for God's sake, don't send that short straw reporter out to stand in a snowdrift to tell us that it was snowing. And on a personal note, and I love Channel 3, I've got friends there, so I mean no harm. But there was one, I think, very glaring problem with the fluff piece. And that is, in the car, you had a thermometer. And the reporter had to tell us that it was so hot in the car, the thermometer broke, it stopped working. When two hours went by, the temperature inside was so hot, it couldn't be registered on our thermometer. Well, that's not news. News are facts and figures. So I humbly suggest spend a few bucks and go out and get a better thermometer because it would be a much better story to say it's 187 degrees in the car than it's so hot our cheap ass thermometer broke.